Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for visiting my short video where I'll explain briefly about our research in digital imaging under the title Classification of the type of leukemia forming white blood cells using KNRS neighbor AML M4, M5, and M7 as case studies. My name is Nur Cahya Pradana Taufik Pragisha, and here are my team members Fabrili Antoni, Uspanda Hatta. Yusvia Hafid Arsjagama and Andika Stiawa. Without any further delay, let's get started. As we know, blood cancer or leukemia has a history of being one of the deadliest diseases in the world. Its symptoms that are sometimes difficult to detect makes it quite dangerous. Here we can see a cell taxonomy of blood cell. Leukemia can be classified based on the blood cell lineages, namely myeloid leukemia and lymphoid leukemia myeloid leukemia is a leukemia consisting of white blood cells from the myeloid stem cell descendant while lymphoid leukemia is a leukemia which is defined by the number of white blood cells from the lymphoid descendant based on the rate of immature cell multiplication speed and cell descendant as described before the french american british or FAB hematologic classification system divides leukemia into four main types, namely chronic myeloid leukemia or CML, chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL, acute myeloid leukemia or AML, and acute lymphocytic leukemia or ALL. And as we can see here, these types might have their own subtypes which can be further divided. Certain subtypes of AML like M4, M5, and M7 are affected by the same type of precursor cells. They are myeloblasts, promyelocyte, monoblast, promyelocyte, monocyte, and megakaryoblast. They are used as the main factor ratio for AML, M4, M5, and M7, and it to be precisely distinguished so that every cell can be counted. And here we can see some samples of blood cells like myeloblasts, promyelocyte, monoblasts, promonocytes, monocyte, and megakaryoblasts. So, what is our objective here? Well, we will classify those six white blood cell subtypes by using KNERS network algorithm. These results will might have helped the researchers to speed up the classification process and to reduce the misidentification rate that might occur. There are several steps to go through this research. It started from data acquisition, which were provided by STIA1 et al. The next step is data training and testing. Here, we will find the best distance metric used in KNN. The best one is validated by using cross-validation. The results are then analyzed by finding the equation, recall, and precision. The data is actually a set of images features taken from blood preparations. It were captured by Olympus ocular lens with a thousand times magnification. Six features were extracted from these images, which we will explain later. 1450 sets of features are used in this research as training and testing data. This table shows detailed number in its subtypes. Here are the features that are used as a parameter on KNN. K nearest neighbor or KNN is used as proposed classifier in this research. KNN is a supervised classification algorithm based on the distance of the object to its neighbors. The value of K is a number of nearest neighbors included in the contribution of the folding process. The number of K depends on the case where KNN is applied. If the number of K is large, the time and memory cost will be larger. But if it is small, the nearby cost will in general be extremely poor, attributable to the information major condition. It is important to find the best value of K. 
Therefore, trial and error was conducted. Here are some metrics which we try to find the best one to be applied in KNN based on the accuracy. Validation is vital in classification to ensure the model is clean, correct, and reliable. K-fold cross-validation is used as validation method for this research. K-fold is one of the most common cross-validation methods by folding data to a number of K and repeating the training and testing process as much as K as well. Data testing and validation is carried out in three stages. The first stage is dividing the data into two parts. One is for training data and the rest is for testing data. To be proportional, all the 1450 features data set, 1160 objects is considered to be a training data and 290 objects as testing data. The selection of training and testing classes is chosen randomly. The next stage is testing three distance metrics to find out the best one based on the most number of correctly predicted objects and the minimum K number. Its metrics were tested in an increasing value of K neighborhood. It increased gradually starting from 0 and ending at 50. Line graphs of changes in the number of correctly predicted objects from this three matrix can be seen in the figures. The graph shows three line graphs which are representing the sum of correctly predicted objects for every distant matrix. Y axis represents the number of cells and X axis represents the number of K neighborhoods. Its matrix has at least one K neighborhood value that is able to obtain the highest number of cells. The results show that the Euclidean distance successfully identified 229 out of 290 objects at K equal 20. The second distance matrix, Chebyshev, correctly identified 235 out of 290 objects at K equal 20. Meanwhile, Minkowski distance can acquire 240 out of 290 objects at K equal 19. Thus, Minkowski distance continues to be analyzed in the third stage. The final stage is conducting a cross validation with the number of fold 5 which was performed on Minkowski distance. Its fault holds 290 data that will alternate in its iteration. After a confusion matrix was created, we tried to find the accuracy, recall, and precision. Here are the results. We obtained 80.552% of accuracy. And for recall, we obtain 44.145%. And for precision, we obtain 42.592%. And finally, we come to the conclusion. Out of the three distance metrics tested, the highest value was obtained from Minkowski distance. The experiment successfully predicted 240 out of 290 objects at k equal 19. This distant matrix was then analyzed further and generated accuracy at 80.552%, recall 44.145%, and precision at 42.592%. Misidentification occurred due to the variations in white blood cell that were too diverse. They have similar characteristics, which make the classification process more difficult. Given suggestions for the next research is the use of deep learning or genetic algorithm to classify blood cell types. Thank you for your time and have a great day.